I'm here with Ned Bradham of Stratasys, and uh, we're standing in the booth for Impact Systems. Tell us something about Stratasys. Well, I tell you, I'm a channel manager for Stratasys because we sell strictly through a distribution channel through resellers. And here today, we're seeing the back Impact Systems Engineering, which is a reseller here in the state of Texas and also Oklahoma. I'm here to support them here at the Nanotechnology Show. What Stratasys is, is by quite a distance, the leader in rapid prototyping and 3D printing technology, whereby you take a three-dimensional CAD model out of any particular CAD system, it doesn't matter, and then we will take that and through a variety of materials actually make a working prototype that can be tested for normally fit form and function before you go to the expense of tooling and manufacturing. Can you walk us through the process of how the machine makes a 3D part? Okay, we'll be happy to. Let me take an individual part here to start with. Let's take this tool bit that we're using. This would be designed inside of the 3D CAD, and then the 3D CAD um, user would write out a particular file called STL. The STL file would then be loaded into our print driver, very simple software. In fact, we call it a print driver just to show how simple it is. And our print driver, we had orientated it for how we'd like to print it. And then once we have it orientated, we hit a button that tells it to process. And what it does is it divides the three-dimensional digital model into layers, either seven or ten thousandths of an inch thick, one after another all the way through. We send it to the printer, and at that point, the machine starts with absolutely nothing in it. It's the exact opposite of a, um, say, a CNC machine, for example, where you're actually taking away material. That is a subtractive process. This is an additive process. So it starts with nothing. This is the raw material, which is ABS plastic, standard industry plastic that all mechanical engineers know and understand. And this machine acts very much like a glue gun. If you had a glue gun and you put in a stick of glue in the bottom and you extruded a bead of glue and then you were to stack the beads up, you know, that's really what it's doing. It's a large oversized glue gun, except it's not extruding glue, it's extruding ABS plastic. So in the case of the, uh, the tool here that I just had, that we'll just use this one, it doesn't matter. Um, what happens is it divides it into the layers and it lays down the first layer, the table drops, it does the second layer, table drops, third layer, all the way up, 10 thousandths at a time, until you have a, clean, a completed model that you can use for testing normally fit form and function. Now in addition to that, it does something very unique. Here's a nice little part here with these little jaws and gears in here. You can actually print something like this as one print job. It does not have to be assembled. If you want to print it as separate uh, pieces and assemble it, you can. Some customers want to do that because they want to make sure it actually can be assembled when that time comes. But you don't have to do that. It can be a one print job. And the way it does this is it automatically puts down materials between the parts inside of the assembly that is dissolvable in a hot, agitated water tank. And so you take it out of the machine, you put it in the bath of water, it dissolves out, and you take it out and you test for fit, form, and function. Now I don't know if you can zoom up and see this, but in this particular case you'll notice that the jaws actually meet at the top, but they do not at the bottom. So there's a design flaw inside of this particular part. What would happen would be that they would actually go into the tooling, or in other words, expensive part of getting a product to market, and they would manufacture each one of these pieces. They would put it together only to find that it doesn't work. There's probably something wrong with the gear ratios in this particular part. So they'd go back to the computer, they would make some changes, back to manufacturing, remake the missing parts, put it together, and they would continue to do that, design iteratives, until they finally had the design worked out, and then they would go into production with it. There's more Engineering TV coming up part two as we continue Engineering TV. Stay tuned. All right, now let's use this as an example for the design to engineering to manufacturing. This is a home security alarm plate of a very well-known company that we're not allowed to say. 
they spent 30 days making the mold for this, and they called it a one-off mold. And what a one-off mold is, is where you make the, the mold, you inject the plastic only to make one piece, and you use this piece for testing to make sure that your design is correct. It also costs $50,000 to make this particular mold. They're very complex. So in their case, if they make one and find a single design problem, which is normal for about anyone, they have to then go through the process again. So 50000 another month, and they cycle through that. This has become very accepted in engineering. It's just a part of doing business. 